Hello viewers, welcome to another episode of Footprints right here on Solar TV. My name is Sandra Ajiman, your host for this special program. And as you all know, this program is, uh, is made or is brought in life so that we can showcase some of our younger generations who are on their way up and set them as a, a role model for the younger ones to uh, emulate. Today, our guest is uh, a friend of mine, a close one actually, uh, none other than uh, Billy Kweye. Billy is a young Dutch Ghanaian who holds a bachelor degree in biology and medical lab research and is currently pursuing her master degree in public health at the Vrij University of Amsterdam. Let me say that right. Uh, besides uh, being a student, Billy is also a member of the Dutch Labour Party where she serves as a councillor at the local council in Amsterdam South East. So without talking too much about my friend, I will take this time to introduce her so you two also can get to meet her. Hi Billy. Hi Sandra. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. And you? Nice. I'm alright. It's a bit hot today. Yes, that's but, true. Uh, I'm <laughs> loving it. Not to complain, because we've been complaining uh, for so long that it's cold, it's cold, and today finally the sun uh, showed up. Yeah. So, um, yeah, tell me. Oh, at least tell me and also for the viewers. Yeah. Were you born here? Yes, I was born and raised up here in Holland, actually mm -hmm. in Amsterdam. Okay, yes. okay. Yeah. So, um, you were born here, mm -hmm. and there's a question I've been wanting to ask <laughs> okay. since you were born here. Because you speak tree, you speak our local dialect like very good. Yeah. How, how, so how did that happen? Because a lot of, there are a lot of, uh, children or our Ghanaian uh, uh, younger generation who were also born here yeah. or even brought up they were brought here at a very young age mm -hmm. and they cannot speak our language <laughs> so how come you speak the Ghanaian language so yeah. well um, <clears throat> that's an interesting question um, because I hear it a lot of times like you really speak fluent tree so how come and um, when I was young mm -hmm. um, my mom actually always um, used tree to communicate with us mm -hmm. and she really didn't uh, tolerate us um, communicating in Dutch with her it was just a no-go area for my mom so uh, that's actually um, helped us to speak the tree very well okay. and besides that uh, knowing that I was born here and um, not knowing much about Ghana then I was really curious to know much more about the Ghanaian language and uh, because, yeah, I wanted to be able to communicate with my grandma mm -hmm. if I go to Ghana. So that actually forced me and pushed me and motivated me to speak, to learn the, the Ghanaian language, the tree. Mm -hmm. So that actually helped me to speak it well. And I communicate a lot with my parents, with my mom. So that's actually what helped me to learn the tree language okay. and speak it fluently. Okay, yeah. because you said you wanted to uh, be able to speak it uh, in case you go to Ghana. Exactly. Do, you, do you visit Ghana more often? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I visit Ghana a lot. I've been to Ghana like say 11 times. Okay, already? Yeah, yeah already. Since wow. I calculated from my infancy to now, mm -hmm. I've been to Ghana like say 11 times. So, okay. Yeah, I know my way around a bit. Okay, so okay. So, uh, which part of Ghana are you from? Originally, we come from the Bronga Half region in mm -hmm. Ghana. Um, both of my parents are from Bronga Half region. Mm -hmm. My mom um, originally comes from Doma Ahinkro, okay. and my dad originally comes from Brekum, but they were both born in Sunyani, that's the mm -hmm. capital town of Brahma mm -hmm. So I'm not a bit of this, a bit of that, I'm just fully blown. You're fully blown. I'm okay. Fully blown. Interesting. <laughs> so you brought up your parents. Yeah. Uh, what, what role do they play in your life as, my a, as, parents, a, as a kid? Um, they played a, a huge, a major role in my life as a kid. Um, education wise and uh, my Christian life they played a major role and uh, it seems like my parents they really sacrificing themselves for me and my siblings mm -hmm. um, even though uh, for instance a funny thing my parents always say when they go to church uh, in Chi they will say like so uh, both uh, physically and spiritually my parents 
have sacrificed a lot for us and they are still sacrificing a lot. I still live with my parents mm -hmm. um, and uh, education wise they have really helped me especially my dad. Mm -hmm. Even if I feel discouraged in my education he would just sit me down and talk to me and really encourage me and uh, my mom um, as well. So mm -hmm. both of them have their own role in playing part in my education. So my parents are really doing their best. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you brought up education. Tell me, when you were a kid, yeah, in school, yeah, were you like the smartest kid? I wouldn't say I was the smartest kid, but um, I was actually how would I say? I was actually a bit popular. I popular. Oh, I was why? popular because um, I had very, I was very dominant. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm somebody who really takes initiatives. Mm -hmm. So um, I took initiative. I would. Uh, gather like the my classmates. I'll mm -hmm. gather them and we do things. I was always wanted to take the lead. Okay. So um, that made me uh, when it comes to leading things. I was a bit popular in the eyes of my, my my teachers because they knew that hey, this girl she can really takes initiative. She's dominant in certain mm -hmm. things. She always takes the lead. So uh, that actually made me a bit popular at, in school. In school. Yeah. Okay. And because also my originally my red hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And, uh, with my freckles, so anywhere I was, they would see me. Oh, the girl with the red hair. So that also actually only makes make me popular. At school. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask a question, but. Does that mean red hair that makes you automatically different from yeah, everybody else? Yeah. Did that ever bother you? Yes, it did. As a kid, um, it bothered me a lot when I was a kid, because uh, yeah, with, with your classmates, they would they would just tease you with it. But mm -hmm. the the uh, adult people, they just adored it. They just loved it because both of my parents they have black hair. So me coming red hair, like I remember my dad even telling me once that he was walking on the street and somebody saw him with mm -hmm. me and the person asked, is that your child? <laughs> and my dad said, yeah, that's my child. Why are you asking? He said, no, 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 because the child looks different from you. You have black hair and she has red hair. How come she's your child? And he was like, that's my child. Yeah. Yeah. But it's from my dad's family. There are lots of um, red people there okay. with red hair. So it's... Okay, because I know your, your mom your mom is, is, is very uh, fair, yeah. he's light skin. Your dad also, very, yeah. but I don't recall him having the, the freckles. freckles. No. no, but then no. you do and your brother yes. also does, but your yes. younger sister doesn't. No. <laughs> That's very funny, because even your brother, he also has red hair. Yes. But your little sister doesn't, doesn't have, have red hair, so no. that's, uh, that's, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but I, anyway, I like, I like, uh, I like people with freckles, I don't know why. I, <laughs> I used to hate it. What? Yeah, I, I like really used to, I, really, I, I didn't wanted to get rid of them, but uh, one day I, I remember writing a letter to my one of my lectures at secondary school telling him that I'm going to get rid of my freckles. Mm -hmm. And he was so upset telling all the teachers to convince me not to do it mm -hmm. because uh, people were really teasing me with it and especially also with my red hair. Mm -hmm. I really struggled with it before really loving it. So um, one day my teacher said, are you crazy? I said, yeah, I want to get rid of it. So convince other teachers to tell me that I should really love it. And right now, I must admit, I really like now it. Now you really love no. it, I'm sure you don't. Know, because you don't have to color your hair no. and do all them no. ridiculous stuff some people do to their hair. You just yeah, naturally no. bless. Yeah, it's it, true. It makes you different. Yeah. It makes you stand out. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, I really love them. I yeah. think it's cute. So yeah, I mean, I'm too dark. To have some, maybe I have some, but you can't see because I'm dark. <laughs> anyway, so tell me something. Mm -hmm. uh, during your school uh, time, mm -hmm. yeah, is there anything that ever uh, affected you either positively or negatively? Um, positively, what affected me was that um, I was uh, from infancy. I was quite serious with school mm -hmm. and mm, like, especially with homeworks. If mm -hmm. people didn't write down the agendas with their homework, they would be calling me like, Bill, hey, what's the homework that we mm -hmm. have? Because you always write it down on your agenda. So what homework do we have? And negatively, like I already said it uh, earlier on, like with my hair color and my freckles, people were really wondering, you're a Ghanaian, red hair, freckles, how come? All sorts of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, this silly questions sometimes I think about, I'm like, are you serious <laughs> you're asking me this kind of questions? So that's the struggle that uh, I had during my uh, school days. I mean, we were quite young, and 
some people because of that some people when i see them today mm -hmm. i just try to avoid them mm -hmm. but then they try to come to me because they know the reason why I want to avoid them. Mm -hmm. And they will say, yeah, Bita, I'm sorry, but those days we were young and mm -hmm. we were naive, you know, so they tried to apologize for the things they did. So with some people, we hang, I hang good with them. Okay. Yeah, I have a better At least it's, a, it's good that they've, they've, they've grown and they've oh, realized yeah. that. Uh, yeah. 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 Hmm, that's, uh, that's, that's another one. So really, describe yourself to me in three words. <laughs> Wow, okay, that's a good question. Describe myself in three words. I would say um, I'm a very adventurous person. Mm -hmm. That's one. Um, I'm very um, extrovert. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm more of like a futuristic person. Okay. Yeah, always planning ahead, thinking of the future, like doing things towards the future. I'm more of a future thinking person. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Good description. That's <laughs> a good description. Another thing, since we we go to the same church, we fellowship <laughs> at uh, the Pentecost Church, both of us. Actually, we've been fellowshipping there since we were quite uh, young. Little were. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> question actually so what is a dickness mm -hmm. <laughs> what role you play yes. and also i want to know what made you take that decision oh, wow. and if it was easy or not <laughs> it wasn't easy i can say that now okay to start with what's a dickness mm -hmm. or a deacon a dickness or a deacon in church is somebody who actually um like you're one of the leaders of the church mm -hmm. um, you help in the church make sure that everything is put in place in order mm -hmm. um, if things are not going well you make sure it's in order mm -hmm. um, for instance um, if the church needs something you try to see that the church will have it visitation of members mm -hmm. if members are sick uh, members are backsliding you visit mm -hmm. them um, you hold meetings with the elders mm -hmm. <clears throat> and with the pastor sometimes and hold meetings about the ongoing of the church so what you actually do is, as spiritually, you also have to pray a lot um, so that the church will go on well. So mm -hmm. uh, being a dickness comes with a lot of responsibilities than lots of people actually think. It's not just come some kind of post that you have and, oh, I'm a deacon, I'm a dickness, and uh, you're looking down on people. No, mm -hmm. it's actually what you need to do as a deacon or deacon is you're serving mm -hmm. the church. You're serving people in the church, you're serving the church, and you're trying to see that everything will be in order, everything will be in place, will go on well with the church. So as a deacon, I see myself more as some to serve mm -hmm. the church, to serve people. So that's how I see as a deacon. So that, uh, and that's the responsibilities you have. Mm -hmm. It comes with a lot of responsibilities, yeah. as I said earlier on. So you're serving. And lastly, the question you asked about um, whether it was difficult for me to <laughs> take that responsibility yeah. as a dickness. Because how did it go? You you, you <laughs> sent in a request, you want to be a dickness yourself, or no, they, no. They, 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 they requested for you to be a dickness, <laughs> and then you just jumped yes, or... <laughs> What happened? Well, Sandra, funny enough, uh, it, does, it didn't go as you are describing okay, it. Okay, I'm sure it didn't different. go that way. <laughs> um, how did it went? Um, I was um, told that um, mm -hmm. our pastor at church, this happened in 2010, it's almost three years now. And yeah, what? it's quite, time really flies. Yeah. He told me, he, um, like, he informed people that he wants me to be a dickness. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, no way. Um, not now, maybe in the future. Because mm -hmm. I was quite young at that time, and um, like I was one of the youngest, mm -hmm. comparing myself to the elderly people. And yeah, I would say that I saw myself a bit like, into like the world I am in mm -hmm. is different from the world they are in. And mm -hmm. the way they do their things is different from how I do my things. I was thinking, wow, if I go and work with them, I think, things won't work out because I, I can't really sit and see how they do their things. Mm -hmm. I won't really accept it. 
because it's I, I, that's not how I do my things. So I was really playing hide and seek. When they wanted to come to become a dickness, they called me, they told me, I said, no, don't want to do it, maybe later on. So I was really, really playing hide and seek. Until um, there were a lot, some people, they heard it, mm -hmm. and they knew that I was playing hide and seek with it. And some people saw me and they told me like, uh, Billy, um, only God knows why he's placing you in this position, so don't be stubborn about it. And different people use the same example. Mm -hmm. It's um, the sample of Jonah. Mm -hmm. when God wanted to send him to Nineveh and he was dodging. So people kept on saying the same story. So I was thinking, mm, okay. That's the one saying? that ended up in the, 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 the animal. Yeah, the yeah, market. yeah, yeah, the whale. <laughs> yes, the whale. Uh, exactly. But I was still a bit reluctant to become a dickness until I spoke a friend who was actually also here in Holland. We went mm -hmm. to Sunday school with. He's in England right now. And he is actually a deacon there. Mm -hmm. And we are the same age. Okay. So I told him about it and he could really relate to what I was saying. He really understood it because like we we're speaking the same language. Mm -hmm. He understands what I'm talking about. So he really understood why I was being reluctant, didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. But he really talked to me. He also goes to Pentecost by in, in England. And he really talked to me and explained certain things to me. Actually he really convinced me yeah. to take um, this job, this responsibility. So uh, I said, I think God is really talking. So I need to be obedient. Yeah. And take this job. I take this, this, this opportunity. So that's how it actually went. It didn't it went sweet? I think yeah. From what you're describing, it, it must have been a very difficult yeah. decision yeah. to take. Yeah. And so far, how do you feel? Do you feel you you did the right thing? Um. So far, yes. I uh, feel like I did the right thing. Yeah. I did the right thing because from my field, anything that I can do to help, I'm mm -hmm. doing my best to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Good job. <laughs> you know, because not many young ladies will just uh, stand up and say, yeah, let me give away all the nightclubbing and the... <laughs> what yeah, because it, it, it comes along with sacrifices. Yeah? Yes. Yes, yeah, true. All the... You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All of them just to become faithfully and serving God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not everybody that can do that. So you, you you're doing a great job. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. So let's go on to your professional life. Yes. And I I I, I would actually before you tell before we go on to what you you do as a profession. What was the first job? That you've ever had <laughs> the first job i've ever had um if i can recall it was at the age of 15 mm -hmm. and i applied a, a summer job at hema hema yes okay hema that was like year 2000 yeah okay yeah, year 2015 okay. and that was my first job okay at hema so i wore that's my first job and how did you experience that it was a good experience because um, uh, when I went there, I was working with lots of people that I know, mm -hmm. schoolmates, mm -hmm. and people that I know from here in Amsterdam Southeast. So I really liked working there, but it didn't take long after the summer holidays. I decided to stop so I could focus more on my education. Okay. So, but it was a good job. Okay. Yes. So after working at Hema, yeah. years passed. <laughs> and now you are one of the youngest uh, member of our Ghanaian ladies in politics. That's true. That's quite a, <laughs> a jump uh, you, you made. That. I'm sure it didn't just happen at no. once. It went in, uh, uh, in stages. In stages, but it, it's it's quite impressive. Yeah. And tell me, what what is your role in the team? Um, as a counselor, what you actually do is. Mm -hmm. um, you are actually a representative for the society that you live in, in the community that you live in. You look at the things that are going on and then you talk it to um, the policy makers at the council mm -hmm. if things are not going on well. For instance, um, recently we have been seeing lots of um, burglar um, cases at the mm -hmm. H line um, and uh, you hear about it. So what you do is as a counselor, you can ask the policy makers 
you can write questions and ask them what is actually going on there. Um, has the elder man ha heard about it? Mm -hmm. What's he doing about this? What's the police doing about it? So it's it's more of you're actually make um make be a mediator between between um, the, um, the community that you live in, you're serving them, mm -hmm. you're mediated between the community that you live in, also the policy makers, those who write the policies. And um, it's what you actually bring forward, that's what a policy is going to be written about. Mm -hmm. And sometimes policies need to be adjusted if the, um, it's not going on well with certain things or so needs to be changed and some adjustments are made. But what you actually do as a counselor is you give an ear to the community, you listen to them and see to what extent you can help them in the things that are going on in the society. Yeah. So you are, it's, it's a serving Service. job. Yeah, you're serving the community. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But uh, tell me something. It is, 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 is that a full-time job? I mean, it's not a full-time job, but it's almost like a full-time job. Mm -hmm. um, what we actually do is we go on meetings in the evenings. Mm -hmm. For instance, I'm still a student. Mm -hmm. um, daytime I go to school and our meetings are in the evening and sometimes there will be certain meetings that you have to go in the afternoon because they can't do other meetings in the evening or whatsoever so mm -hmm. you have to go in the afternoon but most of the time it's a part-time job which you do in the evening so our meetings are held in the evening but besides that before going to the meeting you need to prepare a lot you need to read a lot mm -hmm. find out information and asking questions prepare yourself before going to the meeting so it requires a lot of reading mm -hmm. and researching and asking to do this job. Okay, yeah. okay. Because I think a lot of people uh, mistake and automatically think that this is a full-time job. Yeah, that's so true, that's true. But to... I always try to, if I see people around, I always try to explain that it's it's not a full-time job, it's a part-time job, of course. If I see people on the street, they're doing, hey, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't you be at your work? Mm -hmm. And I have to explain that it's not a full-time, it's a part-time job. It goes to meetings in the evenings. So. Okay. Okay, well, viewers, uh, we've come to the first part of, uh, of this interview slot with uh, Billy Kwaye. I hope uh, you've been enjoying it so far and uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back with the part two of, uh, of this interview slot. Welcome back, uh, viewers, to the second part of this interview slot with Billy Kweye. Uh, so far, we've uh, learned about Billy's early stages and her professional life. Uh, that was during the part one. So if you missed it, then uh, you're going to have to check salto.nl on uh, salto2 on demand and you will find it right there. It was very interesting, so I hope uh, you search for it. So we're going to continue right where we left off. And uh, that was uh, about your financial, uh, I mean your professional life. Mm -hmm. But I still, I have another question again that I want to ask even before we we get down to serious business. Because I recall, and as I also indicated in the first part, we, we go to the same church, which is the Church of Pentecost. And uh, I recall that, at least I've come across this name, a name, it's quite interesting, Lady President. Oh my days. Yes, that's the name I recall. And I've always wondered, like, how did that name come about? So you tell me today, right here on Footprints, Lady President. Oh, that's a good one. I didn't even thought that you would come up with that yes, question. No, I have to because I've been curious and today I have you to my disposal so I have to ask you every question I've ever wanted to ask. So fill me in. Yeah, lady president. Yeah, that's true. Um, how did that name came into existence? Uh, it actually started in 2005 um, at church. We were having um, a youth festival at church. And we did a little drama, and mm -hmm. we did a drama about a mock parliament, about the parliament, how debates go on in parliament. And um, I happened to be the president mm -hmm. <laughs> in that um, drama that we did, actually. I happened to be the president of a country called Gloryland. Okay. Yeah. And um, I, as a president, I gave my uh, address to the nation, I gave mm -hmm. a speech. So afterwards, the president would give the speech, 
then the minority group and the majority group of which I joined because we are in, we are in power, mm -hmm. um, our party was in power, then they would debate with each other about the things that I said. Mm -hmm. So uh, that name, afterwards I did the president, everybody was going, hey, president, president, lady president. So then that's where that name, okay. lady president because, came you know, into it's, existence. It's, it's, it's funny, <laughs> because I knew, I, I've heard this name, lady president, yeah. and when I first heard it, it didn't take very long, then I, I got a message from you, or I think you told me to vote for you, <laughs> and that you were going to do this, uh, so... I thought, when I first saw the fire, I thought, hey, this girl is taking this thing very serious. So she's taking it to a different level. But it's funny. That's what, what, what they say about uh, the tongue. Because yeah. the tongue is a, strong, uh, is a strong thing. Because the things you say could actually come to pass. Because yeah, we've been true. saying lady president, lady president. And now you see the fact that she's on. She is a politician. Before you know, she will actually become the president of this country. Or maybe our beloved country, Ghana. Yeah, no. Where would you like to move? Right? Which one of the countries would you like to rule? If, if I had the opportunity to rule in Ghana, I'm really passionate about it in Ghana, to do something for Ghana. Because mm -hmm. whether I like it or not, I might be born over here in Holland, but I will always remain a Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. I am a Ghanaian, so there is, as they say, there is no place like home. Mm -hmm. I might be born here, off though. I go to Ghana sometimes, I miss here, but I really want to do something for Ghana, the mm -hmm. country Ghana. So, in this case, if you say, where do you want to serve? Like what I've learned here, I think it's also an opportunity to take it back home and serve uh, my beloved country Ghana. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> but then I have to change my nationality. I was about to tell you that, and I was going to ask, what kind of president are you going to be? Would That's you be the kind of Kufu or the Mahama kind of president? Would you be or Kufu? <laughs> <laughs> now back, 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 back to seriousness. Uh, uh, Excellency, <laughs> lady president. What what are some of the challenges that you face in uh, doing your uh, a job as yeah. a serving as a politician? Well, um, I face a lot of challenges, mm -hmm. you know. And as I said earlier, or like, um, yeah, like on paper, it seems like part time job, but. Um, it takes a lot. So actually, even with a part-time job, I can even correct say like it's actually a full-time job because people will be calling you the things that you need to prepare, um, things people will see on the street and say to you. Mm -hmm. You know, these are kind of the challenges that you go through, and you know that you're serving the community. So you need to give an open ear mm -hmm. to people to what they're saying. Take it very seriously. Although it's not everything that you can help immediately. It's sometimes it takes time. But um, even at, at work, if you have meetings um, within your party itself, sometimes mm -hmm. there are challenges that you face. Okay. Because although you might be in one party, but it's not not everybody agrees with what you are saying. Mm -hmm. um, somebody might disagree with you just the fact that the person dislikes you mm -hmm. um, or really dislike your opinion. Mm -hmm. So even internal, you can have issues. Mm -hmm. Let alone going out to face the other parties and then have meetings with them so it really struggles sometimes we we'll close at 3 a.m in the morning and then i uh, have to go sleep in a couple of hours i have to go to school 3 a.m yeah, in the morning yeah, yeah, and then yeah. starting starting maybe nine o'clock yeah okay. so it's that these are the real the challenges that we face and i think we shouldn't call your job a part-time no, job anymore no. i mean obviously the benefits that you get from it's it maybe part -time. that's part-time yeah. but the effort that's that being put in yeah, it is, yeah, is, is, yeah, is much... Uh, and sometimes things get really heated up, mm -hmm. you know, because with certain things, sometimes certain things are very sensitive, mm -hmm. so it can really get heated up. And uh, like, this is my first term, so there were certain things I was thinking, wow, okay, you see it on television right now, no joke, this is real, mm -hmm. you know, and um, sometimes um, I will go home and I'll carry all these things with me and I'll be thinking like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to solve all these problems? But then I'll have people who might call, they mm -hmm. advise me, and, and, and because I'm still young, mm -hmm. I have lots of people there who really take me as their child. Mm -hmm. So they will advise me on certain things, and it's, it's a challenge, but it's also a very great opportunity, I must admit, to, to um, be in such, such, such a, uh, a job, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, in such a position. And yeah. you learn a lot, it really opens up your mind, and really, 
makes you think ahead mm -hmm. in, in, in your planning everything that you do and yeah. as I said you're serving the community it's not that I'm there so I'm, I'm, I'm this I'm that no uh, like for instance somebody whose slogan I always took and I really like is um, the late pimp for time mm -hmm. although he had some issues he had some things that he came up with which was a bit controversial mm -hmm. but his slogan was something which I always take it to my heart at your service mm -hmm. like he really wants to serve mm -hmm. and being in politics is you're also serving because you're a representative you're mm -hmm. serving the community so it's it's a uh, also mm -hmm. it's you're serving people it's not that you're there and then you think you're all that no it's more of serving and giving out information people don't understand that they they come to you for advice for information okay yeah. okay That's so challenging uh, there are lots of challenges i must admit Sometimes I'll go late at home, my parents will be worried. Mm -hmm. How come you're coming home this late? Yeah. And I have to explain certain things to them, you know, because I'm still living with my parents. So yeah. it's not only challenging for me, also for them. Yeah. So then, then I wonder, because you studied uh, biology and medical lab Love research. research. <laughs> so why, why in politics? Yeah. Um, why in politics? It actually started at the age of 18. I joined a group called Yarso, and it's Yohra Atfis Radside Host. And um, this Yarso group is actually initiated uh, by the council. Mm -hmm. um, they formed this group, and what uh, Yarso actually does is, is to give um, advice to the council about mm -hmm. the youth. So they form actually a bridge between the youth in Amsterdam Southeast with the council because mm -hmm. most of the time youngsters find it a bit hard to get close to the counselors or go to the start deal and say their things so um, what uh, I joined this group at the age of 18 mm -hmm. and we were already having um, a connection with the council because we were giving them advices they will also ask of us for things to find out things for them mm -hmm. so I was already um, introduced into this political work at the age okay. of 18. So that's how it. I got actually interested into um, politics. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's enough uh, about uh, your professional life. Let's go on to your family life. Yes. And I'm sure a lot of people would be interested to know if our lady president here is married or not married. <laughs> so Her Excellency. <laughs> <laughs> Are you married? <laughs> no, I'm not married. No. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> hmm. It makes me even curious to ask uh, some some other questions. Uh, <clears throat> so you're not married? No, I'm not married. <laughs> I'm serious. You see, no rings. You're not married. I'm eh? not married. Okay. No rings. Don't you see? So you're single. <laughs> I'm single. Yes. Do you have any children? Do you have any kids? No, I don't no. have kids today. Okay. I but have this policy for myself, mm -hmm. not that um, I don't want to become a mother before I get married. Amen. Amen. So that's a personal Amen. policy not for myself. Mouth. Amen to that. <laughs> so, but then, of, yeah, so you, you, are, you expect to get married and then have kids. How many children do you want? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me, surprise me. <laughs> so, surprise me. Explain you see it. So uh, that brings us to the last session of this uh, interview slot, which is the general issues and yeah. advice part. And at, at this point, we, um, we debate, we discuss, we share our ideas and opinions and also advice where that is needed. So um, today, uh, Billy, since you are so interested in the future mm -hmm. i was wondering uh as a, as a topic to to actually discuss uh, with you which was um, at least what came to mind was um investing in ghana mm -hmm. as in our younger generations generation actually investing in ghana what do you think about that i think that's a very brilliant idea mm -hmm. um <clears throat> interestingly 
um, a couple of months ago, I went to a conference mm -hmm. and um, they were saying that the economic growth right now in Ghana is 14%. Mm -hmm. So the funny thing is that the, at the conference where I was in that room, um, the amount of, I would say, African people, because it was in a conference for African countries, it's mm -hmm. called Africa Day, mm -hmm. Africa Day. And the amount of people that were in the room, um, like African people, I could actually count on my fingers. Mm -hmm. It was quite a bit disappointing because it's about Africa. Yeah. And the majority of the said were quite Dutch people. And then sitting down there as a Ghanaian, then um, a presenter who is Dutch, mm -hmm. telling me, a Ghanaian, that the economic growth right now in Ghana is 14%. Mm -hmm. So he was advising us to buy shares mm -hmm. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting down there thinking, wow, economic growth right now is Ghana is 14%. So if these white people hear this, right now they are heading towards Africa because they know Africa right now is the new big booming. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, okay, fine, these whites are going there, but what are we, like, with the youngsters that are here, born here, raised up here, um, doing then in Ghana, are we going to allow these people go back to Africa and invest, go to Africa and invest, or and how about we, the youngsters, we know Ghana much better than they do, because mm -hmm. we that's where we come from. <clears throat> so I was thinking, I think it's it would be very good if, youngsters mm -hmm. would go back to Ghana and, and do something for the country and invest in whatsoever area. At least you have come here, you have had opportunity here, your parents came here, they have sacrificed their life. At mm -hmm. least if they can do something back for the country because they left there for you to have a better future or also for a better future for themselves. But because of certain circumstances, they can't go back. Mm -hmm. At least you having as a youngster, having a better um, opportunity than your parents. I think it will also be very good if, as yeah. youngsters, we can go back to Ghana and I, do something. I think most of the younger generation, when they... Even though now uh, most of them go to Ghana a lot. Yeah, definitely. At least for them, going there every year mm -hmm. is a must. But then the, the <laughs> aim... Yeah, but the aim is just to go and have fun. Yeah, that's is true. Mostly that's during the Christmas. They only see the fun part of it, but there's a whole other part of Ghana that people don't see or they, they, their interest yeah. is just not yeah. there yeah, and that's it's true. sad. Yeah, that's very sad. Because we always complain that, I mean, since we can remember from history that the white people came to Africa mm -hmm. and then they took mm -hmm. our gold, that's our national anthem and then they brought <laughs> it here now we are here. So what we're going to do is basically sort of we come in to take our gold back. back? <laughs> but we forgetting <laughs> that now the gold is there, now they are going there Yeah. to take our gold again and we're still sitting here. So then I wonder, because I, I, I wonder even if today, they, they would have asked uh, how many of the youngsters are willing to go to Ghana, like now. No, I don't think there will be much. No. No. Not it will be very uh, to go and live there permanently. Yeah. you're talking about. I don't think so. I, it will be. No. It, will, it will be difficult. It will be difficult. Yeah. But at least to keep it at the back of your mind will help you work towards yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I think it's very a good idea. At least if you have open up an a bank account, mm -hmm. you know, you can go to Ghana Commercial Bank, open up an account, uh, put some money in there, mm -hmm. and then start saving. Even yeah. if it's saving, you know. Before you realize and buy uh, treasury bills and stuff like that, at least all you these have things, some all these money. things help uh, 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 let the economy of the country uh, exactly. go uh, grow. Mm -hmm. And in the long run, you also profit from it. Right. At least with the treasury bills, your profit is not that high compared to normal stocks. Which, but then you 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 stand a higher risk when yeah. things go but bad. At least but at least it's a start, it's you know, start. and the money will be doing something. Yeah, it's a I start. mean, that brings me to the next uh, uh, topic. That, um, I mean, some of, let's say, especially the ladies and also the younger ones, I think it's also hard for them to even think of investing in Ghana mm -hmm. because they spend all their money buying all these so-called <laughs> expensive stuff to impress who I don't know. Because, <laughs> anyways, it's, 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 it's quite sad because it, there's also this sort of peer pressure that's thing true. That's, that's going that's on. True, that's yeah. true, you see it a lot. Like, if I compare myself, like my time with <clears throat> the younger generation right now, they are like 
the speed that the pace of the speed that you're going with is just too much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I start there, I'm like, whoa, this is just too much. Where are you headed towards to take it easy in life, you know? And um, yeah, the competition is so much, they are so much focused on competition, competing with each other, dressing to impress others, mm -hmm. that um, if they don't take time and take care, they, they might hit the wall so hard before they realize they have hit the wall and without realizing they have actually hit the wall. Mm -hmm. So they, I think they really need to take their time in, in what they are doing, like relax, mm -hmm. relax. The world is there, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> We came, we, the world had six years before, before we, we, we came, we and came. we're going to leave actually, and we're going to still leave be here. Exactly, <laughs> so take your time and think about your future, like I always say, think about the future, invest, rather invest in the future, mm -hmm. even if you don't have kids yet, try to plan ahead, okay fine, where do I want my kids to be, mm -hmm. and like try to invest even in that, if, if, if you can, mm -hmm. but like, it's all vanity because, sorry to say, if you die today, mm -hmm. all these things that you have, that you are craving for, looking out for, it, I mean, even if you bury you with it, 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 that thing might still be there, but you will decay. Yeah, exactly. You, you will decay and you're not there anymore and the thing will still be in the grave. I will shock you. Some of these important uh, shoes, they might not even fit your children. <laughs> because in the other time, <laughs> something <laughs> new will come up. Yeah. They might not even have your size. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they really need to take their, their time, you know. Yeah, no, seriously, we're joking about it, but it's a serious it's a issue. Serious yeah, issue. yeah. So tell me something. Where do you see yourself in the next, let me say, five years? Why, why do you always laugh when I ask you all these questions? Why? Because I'm curious with the kind of question you have. Or your kind of mindset I have behind <laughs> asking you that question. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me where? Where wow. do you find? Where, where do you see yourself? Wow, like, time really flies so fast mm -hmm. that sometimes you really wonder, like, okay, five years time might be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how fast time goes. But five years time, where will I be? Uh, pray that I'm still in politics, mm -hmm. doing my political work, and also serving the community, which mm -hmm. is which I'm passionate about, in helping people, serving people, and um, like. I'm also building on my career in public health mm -hmm. and policy because I'm really interested not only in public health but also translating it into policy okay. in the health issues. Yeah, so that's where I'm really specializing in, in public health and policy. So also building up a career in public health and policy. And five years time, who knows? I hope that by that time, only God knows, but then maybe I'm also a mother. You never know, but then that means I've gotten married by that time then. Okay, so that's, that's the time you will surprise me. Yeah? That's okay. the time I will surprise okay. you with the amount of kids I'm yes. going to have. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, uh, viewers, that brings me together with Billy here uh, to the end of this uh, episode of uh, Footprints on uh, on Solar TV. It has been more than fun. At least I've had fun. I've been laughing throughout the whole <laughs> interview. So, I, have, I, 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 I hope you also enjoyed it and uh, yeah, stay tuned right here on Solawa TV till I come your way with the next guest every Sunday from 6 o'clock going. Good day.